Chris and welcome to the first camera comparison that I've ever shot down in my hometown of Auckland in New Zealand. I have Samsung's S23 Ultra up against the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the Vivo X90 Pro Plus. So right now I'm in the shade. Which one is handling this situation the best? We should have hopefully none of the sky being blown out here, which I think it is a little with the Vivo. Now audio sources, I'm swapping between all three of these phones here so we can have a listen to which one has the best microphones. And it's gonna run ahead, bit of a jog, into direct sunlight now to see how the front-facing cameras are handling this. So the iPhone shoots in 4K with a front-facing camera and so does the S23 Ultra, but the Vivo here does not. The X90 Pro Plus only shoots in 1080p with its front-facing camera. Ultra-wide cameras, so this is looking at One Tree Hill that used to have a huge big tree that was fantastic. I think it was a pine. And if you came up here late at night, it was lit up by these lights and with a bit of wind, it was rather spooky. So with our 4K 30 frames per second here, we're getting, of course, a lot more in the shot with these ultra-wide cameras. Really good view here. And in the distance, you can see Rangitoto Island. That's a, it's a volcanic island. I think it erupted about a thousand years ago. It's just dormant, sleeping. And a bit of a jog ahead. Testing again the stabilization, but this time, of course, it is electronic image stabilization. There is a bit of wind. So another good test of these microphones how they handle the wind noise. So the new Samsung here, the S23 Ultra, has the 200 megapixel sensor. It's up against the Vivo's one inch sensor, uh, which is 50 megapixels, and then the 48 megapixels with the iPhone 14 Pro Max that I have. So I'm just gonna sprint ahead, test of the stabilization, both optical and electronic. This is Cronwell Park in Auckland, New Zealand, and there's One Tree Hill, which is just up behind all of these trees over there and as I pan around slowly hopefully there is no padding panning judder which I do find to be very annoying seems to happen most often on the Android phones it's now 4k 60 frames per second should look a lot smoother I'm down at the viaduct here, which was quite famous when we had the America's Cup. You can see one of the yachts is down here. Just behind me, what I showed you before was part of the Maritime Museum. And of course the Sky Tower there in the background. So a bit of a sprint now. Testing out the electronic and optical image stabilization with 60 frames per second. 4K and then just a little bit of a pan around here. Which do you think looks the smoothest? And now we're using the maximum optical zoom here, so we've got 10 times with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra and a 3.5 times with the X90 Pro Plus from Vivo and of course three times with the iPhone. I'm gonna just walk ahead a little, testing out the stabilization. Of course the higher zoom is going to be a lot more susceptible to the movements as you can see, just walking ahead. So really you want to stay as still as possible when using and shooting with these optical zoom cameras. So I'm going to take it up a little bit more digitally. This is now 15 times with the S23 Ultra. Take it up to 10 times here with the Vivo. And then up to about five times. There we go, five with the iPhone looking at the Sky Tower here in Auckland, New Zealand. And then over to low light video. So these front facing sensors, which are tiny, they are really struggling with these conditions. So there's no street lights around me. And I have just over this side, a few street lights that I will get a bit closer to. And as I come nearer to them, you can see it's getting a little bit better, but all three of these are really struggling with these kind of conditions. Which one do you think looks the best for the front facing camera with low light video at their highest setting? 4K for two of them and 1080p for the Vivo. Main camera's here, 4K 30, and you'll notice that with the iPhone we have some bad lens flare. You can see a little bit of it with the Vivo and the Samsung, tiny little bit there. It depends on where I angle it, it might almost look like there's a UFO in the sky, but you can see some of it happening down on the grass area, which is not amazing. So just walking ahead, you see, look at that lens flare. That is really just ruining this iPhone footage here. I don't like that showing up at all. 
and it looks to be the best there with the S23 Ultra. So just panning around slowly, getting a shot of the Double Tree Hotel here in Caraca. Now I wanted to have a look at that sign at which one there is coming out the clearest with our 4K 30 rear main camera footage in low light. So here are my findings. I think the best selfie camera was the S22 Ultra along with the zoom. You cannot deny that. It's 10 times optical zoom is the best out of these three phones here. And it does have the best microphones and audio quality. Overall video quality for front video and the back, including the ultra wide, I think it goes to the iPhone 14 Pro Max but not in low light because of that terrible lens flare, which the other two phones weren't so bad off, weren't so affected by that. So for the best HDR shots, the background blur, but not portraits, colors were bright flowers, I think was the X90 Pro Plus from Vivo. And then low light photos, normally the X90 Pro Plus, but sometimes the sky looked a, a little bit off and a bit of noise. And the closest to true to life colors in the low light was also the Vivo. Thank you so much for watching this camera comparison here. Do you agree with my findings? Let me know in the comments and do subscribe for more.